Hello, I'm Lelda Smiths for the Finance News Network and joining me from MLC Inflation Plus is its Head of Investments, Susan Gosling. Susan, welcome back to FNN. Thank you, Lelda. The MLC Inflation Plus portfolios are actively managed portfolios aimed at delivering returns above inflation while limiting risk. Looking forward, how much risk do you see? And are you worried about markets not being well behaved? We always have to be concerned to some degree that markets won't be well, well behaved. And I think that's particularly true today. So let's take one example, inflation risk. If we look in, in the past, we see that inflation has caused the most severe and significant prolonged negative returns in the past. So is that something we need to worry about today? Well, we know that following the financial crisis, central banks around the world slashed interest rates, engaged in electronic money printing, quantitative easing, and that begs the question as to whether the seeds have been sown of a new inflationary era. Now, of course, we can't be sure, but I think it's fair to say that we probably face a greater risk of higher inflation today than at any point since the end of the 1970s. And Susan, how did we get into the current investment environment that we're in? Well, that's an important question, and it is quite an unusual environment. And to understand it, we need to go back into the 1980s. In fact, in 1987, when Alan Greenspan took over as chairman of the Federal Reserve, just a few weeks before the 1987 crash. And that was perhaps prophetic, because after that, every time the economy looked like slipping into recession or share markets started to slide, the Fed cut interest rates. The problem with that was that excesses that should have been cleaned out in a downturn instead increased, which meant by the time we got to the housing bust in 2007, there was now massive risk built into the system, so we face not a recession, nor a deep recession, but a depression. And of course now policymakers had to act aggressively, and so they of course cut interest rates to zero, and engaged in quantitative easing, and public sector balance sheets took the strain of excessive debt. And the consequences of those policies we continue to work through today. So how do we get out of it and back to a more familiar situation? Well, I think the good news is that another crisis may not be required. And how is that possible? Well, if interest rates are held below the rate of inflation, then the real value of that debt declines. So that's the good news, but it's also the bad news because interest rates below the rate of inflation erode the real value of investors' savings. And they cause all asset prices to be revalued. That's why we've had strong returns, which is good, but it takes us into a low returning world where returns may be lower than the rate of inflation. And of course, that's very challenging, particularly if inflation now rises. What's your approach to managing inflation and other sources of negative returns? Now, our approach to managing portfolios is to take into account that there are a range of potential futures that could occur. So we identify the things that could go right and importantly, the things that could go wrong. How could risks arise and what is, what's the size of those risks? And we control for that in positioning portfolios to make sure that we get the reliable outcome. So our motto, if you like, is if we control the downside, then the returns will take care of themselves. So how did the MLC Inflation Plus Fund perform over the last year and what are your expectations moving forward? The returns over the past year have been very strong. It's been a very strong returning environment and those funds have participated in that. Looking forward, we would expect that if returns continue to be strong, the Inflation Plus funds will do well, but not quite as well as they have done. The reason for that is that share prices and the prices of risky assets in general have run ahead of the underlying fundamentals. So they've become riskier. And when things become riskier, we can hold less of them in the portfolio. So we've rebalanced our portfolio to maintain that consistent exposure to risk through time. And what is the difference between your Inflation Plus funds and more traditional diversified funds? With the Inflation Plus funds, what we're doing is maintaining that consistent risk profile through time. And what that means is that we have to vary the asset allocation as the riskiness of the assets changes through time. So with traditional funds, you have a lot of certainty about where your portfolio will be positioned. With the Inflation Plus funds, you have more certainty about what your return outcome is going to be. Finally, Susan, which investors do your Inflation Plus funds appeal to? Well, these funds have appeal in particular to investors who are quite sensitive to negative returns. So the Inflation Plus funds are designed to have much lower exposure to those significant negatives. And investors who are sensitive to those negative outcomes in particular are retirees, so 
people who are coming towards retirement or who already are in retirement because a significant negative will translate through to a lifestyle problem in retirement. So positioning those portfolios, what we're trying to do is bulletproof them by being ready for anything well in advance. So our message with these funds is that we're working hard to ensure that badly behaved markets don't ruin anybody's retirement. Susan Gosling, thank you for the update from MLC Inflation Plus. Thank you very much.